Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. EQA Nostalgia here, and today I want to talk to you guys about EverQuest Online Adventures. And I just want to bring some of you up to speed with what's been happening. There hasn't really been much going on, and progress has been slow. And I'm not trying to take away from anything these guys are doing, because this is something they're doing in their spare time. All these guys have families and, and jobs and shit like that. So, you know, it's it's rough. It's not easy to get something like this off the ground, and people are very impatient. I'm impatient. I want to play the game now. I want to get online. Even if we were to just be able to run around together in the server and not doing anything. Just, you know, creating characters and hanging out like we used to in Freeport. And we had a little bit of, like, a, a false hope for a while there. Because when Sony Online Entertainment was acquired and they became Daybreak Games, John Smedley came out and said that, you know, they, they were more supportive of, like, private servers and stuff like that. They came out and they uh, they pretty much gave Project 99, which is an emulated EverQuest server, a private server, they gave them the thumbs up and, and their approval saying, you know, it, it's cool what you guys are doing. We're not going to shut you down as long as you remain, you know, non-profit and stuff like that. We're open to that. We're open to, uh, to working with you guys and, and, and stuff. Uh, the specifics, I, I don't recall. I read it a while ago, but basically it was saying this is cool you know go ahead and do what you gotta do and that gave a lot of us hope that maybe we could reach out to Smedley and and get his approval and possibly get some files or something or, or, or some sort of help and we did have a community member reach out to John he sent him an email John responded that he was interested in talking about it or some shit like that but then never responded back again so <laughs> Yeah, it just kind of went the way that I assumed it was going to go. It didn't it didn't get too far, but somebody did try to reach out to him. And yeah, that didn't uh there was there was no fruit bearing from that tree. <laughs> Which really sucks cuz it could have uh could have landed us some files maybe or something that they have in their uh their secret labs on their hard drives down in some dark dank basement <laughs> in their facility, who knows. But it would have been nice to at least hear, you know, you guys got the go-ahead, we're not going to shut you down, but uh, people are still going forward with this. We've seen some things where people are able to uh, to create characters now, and I think that was like the biggest thing that we've had happen. You can actually create a character, which is really cool, and before I really get into that too much, I want to say that on my new PC, I don't have the emulator. It's on my older PC, and I've been trying to get it set up. For some reason, I'm having trouble with it. I've never been good at stuff like this. You know, it's just, uh, I was a console gamer for years, so setting up stuff like this is still, it, it just twists my brain <laughs> trying to figure out how to do all of it. And I'm trying to get some help from some of the community members, but I don't want to bust their balls because it's just something I don't want to do. Hopefully I can get it set up soon. And I can get some uh, some gameplay out there just running around again like I was doing before. My This machine that I have now will handle it way better, so I'll be able to do a lot more. It'll load faster. I'll be able to run around really fast. So hopefully I can get that set up and I'll be doing that. So it'll give you guys something to watch. I know people on this channel are, are craving EQA content from me. And I've been doing a lot of SOCOM stuff lately. So I appreciate your guys' patience. The people that are here for EQA, I know it's been rough. But I do plan on bringing out some more content for that soon. What I've been doing now is I've been using Elutra's videos. And this is something he gave me permission to do a while ago. So it's cool that I can fall back on that. Because he's got a ton of EverQuest Online Adventures content on his channel. I'm going to link that in the description. He's got like everything you could ever want. It's His channel is amazing. It's, it's just the best EQA channel. I mean, I know a lot of people like what I do here. But he, he definitely, hands down, has the best EQA content. But, I mean, the only difference is I do commentary. His stuff is just pure awesome. <laughs> you know, he, he doesn't do commentary, but everything is there to view. You know, if you want to see somebody create, like, a Necro or something like that, that's all there. I've, I've been through this before. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great channel. I can't, uh, I can't give him enough praise for that. So, yeah, people are creating characters... Evidently, you can create, like, gnomes and all that shit again. There's a lot of models and stuff, character models and things that I didn't think we had access to, but we do. So it's nice to see that. That's good, because it's going to help us in the long run. Now, I've seen people launching the game and getting past DNAS 
and getting into a state where it looks like the game's online, but I don't think they're connecting at all. I'm pretty sure there's there's nobody connecting. Uh, you know, more than one account, you know, you're not seeing people play together, but it's weird because I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how all this works, but before people couldn't even get past that. So they're getting past DNAS and all that stuff. So they are making progress. It's just at this point, it's it's that boring kind of stuff, you know, just working out server coding and shit that just doesn't make any sense to me at all. Now, I know they had also reached out to some of the members from uh, from Project 99 trying to get their help, and I don't think that's gone through. They might be doing something behind the scenes right now, because I don't have you know exclusive uh, hands-on with these guys. I don't know what it, what it is that they're doing behind the scenes until they come out and say it. When the Elder Council was first founded and these guys were doing things, they would they would pretty much post every update and then as it became more of a public thing they just they don't want to uh they don't want to jump the gun and get people too excited so now i'm not uh i don't really hear anything at all until everybody else does i was i was just like the public relations guy anyway i make videos so you know i'm i'm by no means on the inside of this thing it feels like they have made a great deal of progress in terms of getting past all that server code bullshit because I remember they couldn't do any of that stuff before and it was looking completely hopeless they had hit a wall and they had expressed that they had hit a wall at this point it looks like they are pushing through it so it's not all doom and gloom oh no we can't get past this now I, I'm sure they've hit snags but they just they keep making their way through it and it's so much harder to do this because it was a game that's on PlayStation 2. If it was on PC, they would have been through all this bullshit by now. It's so much harder to take an emulator and work off of that. I mean, setting up an emulator for a game isn't really tricky from what I've heard, but setting up an emulator for a game and then getting the old server code to work and the way that they worked all this server coding was really unique. From what I've read, it, it was like they had like something like 20 some odd different things going on at once to to make the damn game run. So it was uh, it was pretty intense getting EQA just to run all the stuff they did. They had a lot of things that ran server side, and and that's just uh, one of the consequences of of running a game that was so ambitious on PlayStation 2 hardware back then. So this is really tough for them, and we have to be patient. So that's pretty much it in terms of development and what's been going on. They are making progress, and these guys are, you know, they're vigilant. They don't stop. Nobody's quit. And to be honest with you, a part of me was thinking, you know, they might get so far and then just drop it after like a year. And they've been going for a couple years now. I'm, I'm, I think two or three years. Time flies. But, yeah, they've been working at it, and i got to give them credit for it. And I really hope they can make that breakthrough. One of these days, I'm just hoping I'm going to get up and I'm going to fire up Facebook and people are going to be flipping out because we're able to connect again and get online. So hopefully that happens and happens soon. Now, there is a lot of people asking me, will I be able to connect with my PlayStation 2 and play? Or am I going to need to do it on PC? And, you know, I'm kind of, I've been a little hostile towards those people saying, you know, come on. You know, get a PC and get on PC because you can do so much more with a PC. But yes, you will be able to connect with your PlayStation 2. You're just gonna have to have it set up. I think you have to have that free McBoot shit, or you gotta mod. I don't. I don't know if you have to mod your console, but I, I do know there's gonna have to be something you're gonna have to do. Change something around. Maybe go in and just swap out like the way it connects. Change like the server code or some shit like that. It, it probably won't be too complicated unless you want to have it you know load really fast and have everything on the hard drive assuming you have a hard drive but for me I'm, I'm so past that I mean I do go back and I play uh, SOCOM on PS2 uh, over X-Link but at this point I just you know I would much rather have it on my, my PC because the benefits are, are just huge I can do so much more with it I mean it runs faster everything loads faster there's things you can do to like add things in if you wanted to like mod it or run around quicker stuff like that that I know a lot of you guys are probably saying oh no none of that just keep it basic but I don't know I I'm kind of like a PC guy now so it doesn't make sense for me to go back to that older hardware I'm gonna get a better picture it's gonna look better 
I do have component cables that uh, that bring up the sharpness and stuff for when I play SOCOM, but no, I just I just prefer me personally to play on PC. But I can't I can't tell other people don't do that. But honestly, I, I would recommend you just figure out how to set it up on a PC and get a decent gaming rig, because it is a little tough to run emulators. It takes a lot out of your out of your rig, so you're gonna have to have something probably around four hundred dollar range. You can you can build a PC that's you know that makes PlayStation 4 look kind of silly. Once you start getting up around 400, 450, somewhere around there, it, it makes the uh, consoles kind of look obsolete. But yeah, you will be able to do that, and and that's something that I know a lot of you want to do. As a matter of fact, we've already got a guy, I believe he was in Revival, showing people that he got it to work where he could fire it up on PlayStation 2, and that is cool. You know, I know that's going to make a lot of people happy, so you're going to be able to do that. One of the things that I've expressed interest in is being able to play like mobile, because I have an NVIDIA Shield Portable. I know a lot of people aren't interested in that at all, and I've, I've had people say, oh, that's just, no, that game's not meant to be mobile, it's too hardcore. Well, I want it to be. Because that way I can just, you know, I can take it to the bathroom if I want to. Or go upstairs and relax in, in, the, in the bedroom without having to be down here. Or even while I'm away. But uh, the PlayStation 2 emulator, it's something that they're still working on for, uh, for mobile devices. And I think it's going to be a while before that gets nailed down. I think they have some sort of like a alpha build of it right now. But it would be cool to be able to do that. I mean, I've got the controller built right into this thing. The, the shield portable is really cool, so it would be nice to be able to do that. Do I see myself camping for eight hours with a group? No, I don't, but to be able to go on lunch break and fire it up and just check out the auctions or hang out with some people in Freeport, sure, why the hell not? I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be totally fucking awesome. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the days where that happens, but that's, you know, that's far beyond... That's that's in the in the future, and that's not that's not our focus here, obviously. But it is something that I'd like to do. So that just about wraps it up for this video, guys. Just wanted to bring you up to speed a little bit and talk about some random shit. Why not? I mean, it's it's tough to to make EverQuest Island Adventures content, so I'm kind of like reaching here for things to talk about. But I don't uh, I don't want to keep going on because there are some things I want to discuss in another video. Just real quick before I wrap this up, I wanted to mention that this song was not in EverQuest Online Adventures. You might have noticed that. And I don't think I've mentioned this before, but it is a song that's from the original EverQuest. It is just outside of Ak Annan, so it's it's the gnomish type song. It's got that lighthearted gnome feeling to it, and I really I really like it. It's called Steam Font Mountains. It rocks. And I don't know why it didn't make its way into, into our game. I think it came out with uh, Planes of Power. A lot of the music from Planes of Power and, and the original EverQuest expansion, the music made its way to our game. And this is one of those songs that, as soon as I heard it, it just it gives me feelings of EQOA. It would have been good if it was in there. I like to use this song to close out my videos, this or the Hollis song. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to let it play, and I'm going to wrap up the video. I thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next one.